FluxLora is pushing the boundaries of lifelike AI photography. In this video, I researched and tested everything you need to know about FluxLora, so you don't have to. The video consists of four main sections, each with a deep dive. I added timestamps for your convenience. One of the first places you can use FluxLora is Replicate. Replicate has this model called Flux Day Realism, and you can find the link in the description below. This model allows us to run Flux LoRa and we can create extremely realistic looking images. In order to do that, I'm adding my prompt here. Amateur photography of group of women, friends, casual, noise, high contrast, vivid colors, slight motion blur, JPEG artifacts on Flickr in 2007, 2005 block, 2007 block. I saw this prompt on Reddit and I think it's a really cool one because it really creates realistic looking, everyday, casual, super amateur looking and super realistic looking images. I'm setting aspect ratio to 16 to 9, keeping the other values as default and I hit run. So the results are here and then it looks incredibly realistic. There is a slight problem with the teeth here, but besides that, the image looks like it's taking with a real camera. So I updated my prompt a little bit and added amateur iPhone photography. I kept the rest same except I got rid of the vivid colors. I'm trying to push even harder for increased realism and I hit run. So I'm really like amazed and surprised by the amount of realism here. It just looks fantastic. The amount of realism this model gives is simply mind blowing. I want to try another one. Say iPhone selfies, Snapchat photo, 2018, phone selfie, casual outfit. And let's do this. 9 to 16, hit run. So in the output, there is a, a little bit of a slight nudity, but it's nothing drastic or nothing crazy. The next place you can use Flux LoRa model is called FreePick Picasso. So it's a model called Picasso under FreePick. Unfortunately, this option seems paid when you want to switch to Flux Realism. It asks you to get a plan, so it's not possible to use it without paying for it. I'm still sharing, just so you know. Uh, of course, you don't have to uh, pay for this because there are other options where you can use Flux Realism for free. So plans look like this. You can, of course, use Flux Fast, which is not that great. Next option to try Flux LoRa is Fault.ai. Um, it's also a paid service. Uh, but since I was training my own model here, I had already some credits. Um, I will just demonstrate you. Since it's a paid option, it may be not the most popular option out there for you. So it's pretty much the same model, it's just a different UI. Let's try a challenging prompt for generative AI models. Photo of a hand holding a teapot and filling tea to a pink cup. I will set guidance into 2.5. So the result is here. Everything looks great. It's a proper teapot, a little small, but does the job. I didn't actually specify the teapot should be pink, but it made everything pink. It's fine. The grab seems okay-ish. I think it's, it's totally fine. So it does the job. Next option to try Flux Laura is hugging face. I'll try this prompt, photo of a man playing a guitar. This prompt sometimes gets difficult for models because you need to do the position of man and hand, right, the guitar, the, the chords, they need to look good. So I want to try this one to challenge the model a little bit. So I just entered the hugging face. I already had an account, but if you didn't have account, you can actually create one. And I, I came to the model page. I wrote my prompt here and I hit compute and I didn't get charged. I didn't ask money and model was direct, directly running. And it looks fantastic. Look at the details here. Look at the chords, look at the guitar, the, the hands, the position of man. Everything looks fantastic. It looks, it looks amazing. So if I'm not mistaken, you can use hugging face option for free. Uh, there is probably a limitation and I will add details of the limitation to the video when it comes to pricing, but it's, uh, it's a pretty much free to, to use it here. The other option is called Sweet AI. See, when you visit the Sweet AI homepage, there are quite a lot of models. You can choose models and from right corner on the top, you can uh, filter model types. For example, I filtered LoRa and Flux1D and I had this model, Xlabs 
Flux Realism LoRa here. I click on Xlabs Flux Realism LoRa model. Um, when I sign up to the Sweet AI, they gave me 100 bus. Uh, when I click on Create and it shows me the prompt box to use the model, I see the generating one image actually costs 163 bus. Like uh, bus is like the credit system. Therefore, uh, to generate with this model on Sweet AI, it seems that it requires topping up my bus credits, which therefore is paid. So I was able to use Flux LoRa on Replicate and on Hugging Face for free. And full disclaimer for Replicate, I used the coupon code uh, mentioned in Matt Wolf's this video here. And in the description, you will find the $10 credit link. So I used that uh, and those credits were added to my Replicate account. So uh, thanks to this, I was able to train my own models and generate with Flux LoRa model there and I didn't pay for anything. So I would probably recommend you to check that video out and thanks again to Matt Wolf for providing this credit. Next, we will talk about how to train your own custom Flux LoRa models to generate AI images of yourself, your pet or create AI influencers. And we will train our Flux LoRa on Replicate. In order to do this, we are visiting Ostris Flux Dev LoRa Trainer. And don't worry, I will provide the link in the description down below. We are coming to the first input field and choosing create a new model. Then it will ask us to give a new name to our model. I will call this Cyber Jungle Flux LoRa. In the next step, we need to provide a zip file containing the images that we want model to be trained on. They are recommending at least 10 images for training your model. They need to be JPEG or PNG format. So if you want to use the images from your, for example, iPhone, you probably need to convert them. Here I prepared 17 images of me. And for some of my subscribers, probably this is the first time that you are seeing my face. The naming of the images are really important and you need to be careful with this. As you can see, I did the naming in a way that it includes the cyber jungle in it. This is important because we will use this keyword. Simply, you can write a photo of any trigger word that you want to use, and then you can add a number after it. And these photos needs to be a zip file. That's why now I will select all of my photos, right click and choose compress. This will create a zip file. I uploaded zip file, which consists of all of my photos. Next thing is choosing your trigger word. I will use cyber jungle as a trigger word here. I keep auto caption default on. I will not change anything here and here, and I will keep the steps in 1000s in the default value. Same for learning rate and batch size that I will keep it as a default. Here you can use your hugging face repository ID. Since I'm leaving this empty for now, I also don't need the hugging face token, and I'm leaving this part also empty. I click on create training and here, as you can see, training is running at the moment. So our training is completed. It took 23 minutes. You can see the status here as succeeded. And now we can run our model to generate images with my own face. Normally training your model on Replicate is paid because you are basically renting the GPUs from them. But I used the $10 coupon code mentioned in Matt Wolf's video. Let's go ahead and run our trained model. You can see the name of my model, Cyber Jungle Flux LoRa, is trained, and I'm in my playground. First thing first, I will write my prompt. I wrote this prompt, a portrait photo of Cyber Jungle and his monkey friend in the jungle. It's very important that I use the keyword Cyber Jungle, which is exactly the same trigger word when I used while training my model. I'm choosing aspect ratio, keeping the number of outputs default, LoRa scale, number of inference steps, model and guidance scale, and everything in default. And I hit run. So in the first try, uh, I wasn't able to get the results that I wanted. I'm pictured as a monkey here. I can't say it's, uh, it's a wrong depiction. Uh, I think I'm less hairy than this monkey here. Let's try something a little bit more simple, portrait photo of cyber jungle and hit run. This time I got the female version of me, which is quite interesting. It's not exactly what I wanted, but I feel like I'm coming closer and closer. At least this time I'm not a monkey and I actually look quite pretty. So let's try another prompt. 
I have a feeling that current guidance level of 3.5 is already way too much creativity for the model. I will try to increase it to 6 and I will keep the prompt portrait photo of cyber jungle. Let's run again. <laughs> so uh, we are coming closer and closer to my real photo. For the reference, I normally look like this. So we are not that far, yet not quite there. But I have a feeling that maybe this guidance level actually worked much better. I got better results after updating my prompt a little bit, as well as guidance. It looks much closer to how I look. I specified the gender because a model was mixing up and bringing a lot of results. The results started to get better and better. And I came to the conclusion that the problem was probably about my uh, training images. I had so many close-up shots, but maybe not enough full body shots or medium shots. I don't exactly know if that was the reason, but because of that, in certain cases, I got like, when I mentioned Cyber Jungle, I, I got like animal results. Another option to train your own Flux LoRa is called fall.ai. Here, when you come to model gallery, on top, you can see the option to train a Flux LoRa. I will also add this link to the description down below. We click on train a Flux LoRa, and then we are coming into this training page. It's a very similar workflow to replicate. Training your model on fall.ai is paid. It costs approximately around $5, but I will still demonstrate to you in case you want to prefer to use this one over the replicate version. This time I will train the model with the images of Loni, my dog. So you can see I added a couple of her photos and I will again zip them so I can actually upload to the file.ai for training. I'm going to press on compress and I'm creating a zip file. So back to file.ai, I will choose my images. I'm just selecting the zip file that I created with photos of Loni. Couple of additional settings. I will set up a trigger word again, Loni. I will keep the steps at thousand and rest of the settings I will keep as a default. Besides that, there is nothing I need to set it up. I simply click on start. So after we hit start, you can see training is in progress. So my training is completed. It took 27 minutes and you can see I'm charged by $5. I will click on run inference and this will bring me to the model that I trained. I'm coming to the prompt box and let's start with something simple to verify that model training is successful. Portrait photo of Loni. I will hit run. So images generated and resemblance is impressive. As you can see, this is one of the images I added to the training and it really looks like Loni. That resemblance is really high. Let's try something a little bit more difficult. Photo of Loni as a fighter pilot flying an airplane in World War II. Here's the result. It's quite impressive. Here's another one. Photo of Loni as a boss sitting in the table with a bunch of money. Quite impressive results. Here's another photo from the training set. And resemblance is, is just amazing. One thing I want to add to the generation process about guidance setting. If you want to max out the photorealism, and skin realism, I would highly recommend you to set the guidance number into two. Because when it comes to higher numbers, which is by the way, maximum value is 10, it listens to the prompt much more closely, but you will start to see more plastic looking or 3D or illustrative looking skins or details, and it gets far away from the photorealism. Set the guidance setting into two. Next thing I wanna show you, how to use image to image prompting using Flux. By the way, I managed to find a Flux LoRa image to image prompting possible, and this is on fault.ai. So when you go to fault.ai, there is this model called Flux One Dev with LoRa's. And when you visit this model, it's possible to change from this drop down here to image to image. So when you choose image to image and click on more, you will see it's possible to add an image URL or choose an image from your computer and just upload it. I will not show details of this since this is a paid model, uh, but if you want to experiment with it on file.ai, feel free to check the link down below. Instead, I will show you Flux Dev model on Replicate and it has image prompting option here. So I will go ahead and, and upload one of the Loni's image here. I'm choosing Loni's this cute photo and uploading here. 
I will write the prompt. Dog won the football world cup. Very happy posing with the cup. I will have 16 to 9 aspect ratio. I will keep the guidance towards more realism and let's hit run. So we edit Loni's photo and we edit our prompt and we are using flux. The result is here. So we managed to get the brick wall and we managed to get the, let's say, happy, happy self expression but we were not able to get the details of the face. And we have the revolt cup, which is great. Of course, we can play a little bit more with the settings, but this is how you use image prompting with Flux. And up to my knowledge, and if I'm wrong, please correct me if I'm wrong. Next thing I want to show you, Flux one in painting. And for this job, I found a model online and the link is in the description below. So what you can do using Flux, you can actually do in painting. So I will go ahead and upload an image. I will choose this one where two friends are walking in the city. I'm uploading it. I will use brush tool and brush it here. And I will add a lion. Let's submit. So I tried a few things, but I didn't, I didn't quite get the lion. Uh, I also tried different prompts like lion walking next to the man, etc., etc. But I couldn't quite get what I needed. So I actually saw this on Twitter. It's from Skull's IP. So I probably need to ask him like if I'm doing something wrong because he just like scans it and he wrote baby lion and he hit submit and it adds a lion there. However, I faced some difficulties while trying to use it. It would be uh, smart to double check with him. Creating videos from images created with Flux LoRa. So you can see I created an Instagram model with the prompt, iPhone photography of an Instagram influencer model, candid shot, casual, urban exploration background. I'm going to go ahead and save this shot on Clink. Then I choose image to video and I choose the image I created with Flux LoRa. Now I will add a prompt. As you know, on Clink, according to prompting guidelines, we always start with the subject. So I will say blonde woman walking in the street while camera follows her. I'm gonna get relevance to high. We'll use professional mode, but you can also use standard mode and we'll get a five seconds video. And you can also add some negative prompts as well. So my video is ready. You can see Klink did a pretty great job with this image. Maybe there are slight, very slight changes in the, in the micro level in the lightning, but overall this looks fantastic and you can create simply whole Instagram accounts with the same AI influencer. And just as a quick reminder on Clink, while prompting, always start with your subject and then describe the camera movement in relation to your subject. This is very important. Now we will go ahead and do the same thing also on Runway Gen 3. One thing on Runway Gen 3, you actually need 16 to 9 images because 9 to 16 images then needs to be cropped in order to work. So because of this, I will create a 16 to 9 aspect ratio image for Gen 3. I created this image, which is 16 to 9 aspect ratio, went back to Runway, I uploaded my image, and Runway has a different prompting style. On Runway, they recommend to start with camera movement. So I'm going to say the camera is static, and then we have two dots and I'm adding, she's smiling while talking. We will create a five second image and we are using Gen 3 Alpha Turbo model. We hit generate. This is real time. This is real time. It's lightning fast. The Gen Alpha Turbo model is super fast. It's really impressive. And then we have our video. God, this looks incredibly realistic. This looks really magnificent simply incredible. Hopefully this video was truly helpful for you to explore Flux LoRa AI image generator. If you felt a spark of inspiration, show your support with a thumbs up and join our jungle community by subscribing for more mind-blowing tutorials. If you want to learn more, click here.